Hey everyone, if you enjoyed this video, do make sure to like and subscribe and come hang out with us in Discord. Welcome one and all to the Premier League Power Rankings by the DLC and your host, Sunflygon. So, as Alex mentioned in the Stellar Power Ranking video, which I'm sure you have all watched already, um, what we do here in Draft Rig, as, as is kind of a tradition here, is that after the draft is complete, we will, uh, the DLCs will kind of take their own leagues and rank their teams just purely based mostly subjectively on um how they think each team has done and how they think they'll perform throughout, throughout the season um myself i have done this twice now and the first time i did it the team i ranked 14th out of 14 ended up winning the league and the second time the team i ranked first actually ended up dominating that league so you know, it's, uh, I'm probably due for somewhere in the middle there, but that just goes to show that these rankings are purely my opinion. Um, I play Pokemon in a certain way, and that does not um, kind of go with the flow of how some of these teams have been drafted. So in my mind, they may be ranked a little harsher, but... Um, you know, this is what we're here for. It's just all all be taken in good fun. And this is not to say how our teams will or should perform throughout the season. In saying that, um, the way I do my power rankings is I have kind of 10 or 11 criteria and I give each team a score out of 10. So that includes things like hazards and removal, uh, the synergy of your team, like is there electric terrain, is there um, unburdened strats, is there weather strats, um, and the low, the strength of your low tier mods. I think the trap that some people fall into is using the same five or six each game, like your S tiers, your A tiers, and your B tiers and stuff, and also your Terra Captain usually. Um, I think a lot can be said about the um, how, how well a team goes based on their low tier mons, their E's and F's, and how they can, you know, cause prep to be harder for your opponent and can play a role in a successful team. Uh, another stat is your offense and defense. That's just purely a stat thing. So how's your base stat total, really? This one doesn't mean as much, so I don't factor it in too highly. Uh, speed tiers is a huge one. Um, you know, I, I look, I generally look for things that, you know, you want to have, you want to cover every five to 10 range between say 120 and maybe 60 or 70. And then I also, when I'm drafting a team, I typically want something that I would deem as fast. Now, fast for me is 125 plus. And teams that don't have that super fast mon are kind of punished a little bit in my ranking for that. Um, priority is another um, key aspect here. So, you know, your priority moves, bullet punch, extreme speed, mock punch, accelerock, which I rate really highly. I think that's the best one. Aqua jet, things like that, sucker punch, shadow sneak, etc. Uh, momentum and pivoting. In Premier League, historically, it has been called the Pivot League because that's something that every team typically looks for. We love spamming U-turn, flip turn, and bolt switch, our teleport, parting shot, all those sort of things, um, you know, to gain momentum and stuff. Disruption and support is another one. So things like knockoff, taunt, uh, your screen setters, your tricks, switcheroos, things like that. Um, the type matchup chart is one that I think people overestimate. Personally, I think they'll find themselves drafting things that may, may not necessarily be the best on the board purely to make the type matchup chart look nice and green and no reds. It is something I consider, but I do think people put way too much weight into this. I'm not going to penalize people too harshly if they have one or two weaknesses where there's three resists and four weaknesses. To me, that's nothing. Um, Another thing is the wall breaking potential and setup as well. So can things come out there and with no setup, maybe just a choice item or a life orb just tear teams apart? Um, and can they also effectively set up sweep and things like that? Um, and the last two factors which are worth 20% of the overall score is uh, the cuteness ranks, which 
our, our good friend Boss Baby did. I took the scores from those and kind of threw them in, and also my personal hype factor. So how much I would want to use this team, and how much I would enjoy watching this team, and, you know, just did they draft mons that I personally think are cool. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, so first up, this, these, are the, um, these are the ranks I gave. As you can see, between rank 13 and 1 is less than 10 points difference. So that just goes to show you how close a lot of these teams are. And the team that's ranked 14th, which we will reveal soon, is one that I have no doubts that the player and the coach are very, very capable of making it work, but I'm surprised by their draft because I don't think it fits their style. And, you know, we'll, we'll get into it, but I personally, but anyway, let's, why not, you know what? Let's just reveal who it is. In 14th place with a C grade rank, we have the San Francisco 49 Tales, coached by Gene, our season three or four champion, a season three or four Premier League champion. So that just goes to show the, you know, the, the skill is there for sure, but I have my concerns about this team. So looking at the team here, it's a lot of bulk for sure. And it's a lot of bulk. <laughs> um, I just, <laughs> the, the main two categories where this team was ruined was the hype factor and the cuteness rank. Shocked to, shocked to nobody. Um, I really think this team's going to struggle for offense. You know, you've got... Uh, it's, it's a concern to me when your offense consists of a Zarud, an Azu, and that's about it. Um, don't get me wrong, you can do things like Gliscor setting up and sweeping and things like that. Talonflame can do it too. I suppose Heatran on occasion, Giratina even. But I, I have a lot of concerns about this team's ability to actually beat teams. I feel like their main strategy is going to play the slow long game and bore their opponent into submission. Which personally is not the way I would like to play. Um, I think this team with no changes will struggle to actually, you know, be able to break through other teams and such. So I, I love Gene. He's great. I'm pretty, I'm personally a little disappointed with this draft. It's just not my style at all. There's not many things here I like. I really like Glyscore and the hype points are pretty much exclusively for Glyscore. The low tier stuff is quite strong. Um, I like Electrode, you know, it's got that 150 base speed, can do screens and bolt switches and stuff like that. Spirit Tomb's a good one, super bulky. Um, Ordino is also really good, but they're all things that if you look at individually, they're great. But if you put them all together, they all kind of fit the same role. So, you know, there's just, I, I think they need a bit more variation here and more wall breaking stuff. Um, but yeah, the, the speed tiers are, honestly, throughout looking at their score here as the individual breakdowns, they're all kind of that middling 7.5 to 8 range, aside from the height factor and cuteness. But, you know, if this is one that I normally say I welcome teams to prove me wrong when they're ranked low. I don't want this team to do well as it stands right now. Jane, please fix it. Please make some trades and make this team more enjoyable to watch. <laughs> okay. Let's move on. The Motherland Marsh Tops are in 13 with a score of 82, a B minus tier. So as I alluded to at the start, there was a team that once won the league being ranked 14th, and that team was, oh, sorry, damn. That team was Creature Man back in season two, I wanna say, maybe season three, I'm not sure. Um, he won the victory league with a team that I thought was pretty disgusting. Like it had a lot of issues in my opinion. This one honestly doesn't have nearly as many issues. This is a very good team. The only main concerns I have for this team are the hazards and removal. The main setup being the knuckle stack and cleaver. You've also got toxic spikes with um, Reverend there. 
but the only removal is defog, I believe. So, and those, the defog things are your, uh, your Megalardios, your Cleavor, and Swello. I don't think there's any others. I don't have the, the document in front of me, but, um, has some removal were a pretty weak, weak score for this team. And there's not a whole lot of priority either. Um, aside from those things, this team's, this team's pretty strong. I think there's a lot of setup potential and stuff like that. There's um, a lot of disruption and support and momentum pivoting's all good. The low tiers I think are really cool and unique. I love the Velocim pick and slacking will force people to run protect and things like that. Um, Swallow can punch throw, punch holes through teams. It's, it's a strong team. I think if anyone can make a lower team, a lower ranked team work, it's definitely Creature Man. So I would not be surprised to see him do well this season at all. Okay, next up we have the Lavender Town Spirits. Do not be fooled by this 12th rank. This team, as we'll get to in a minute, I really like this team. Aside from the obvious, that really, really brought down the hype factor for me, and that is the Scrub Chomp. I have a personal vendetta against Guard Chomp. I don't think it's very good. It's ugly, and Flygon's better. But let's move past that. Ho Ho is amazing. Ogapon Cornerstone is great. Iron Crown Terror Fighting is one of the best C tiers on the board. It could have potentially been a B tier, but it stayed C and he took the most of it. Milotic Juvia is great. Uh, it can be offensive, it can be defensive. It's super good. Mian Chao hits like a truck. Regenerator as well, if you prefer that. Sableye moved down a tier this season. I think is great value. Confei a really good low tier fairy type. You know, the priority Giga Train, Draining Kiss, Calm Mind stuff. It's better in the game than in Unite, that's for sure. Weezing's fine. It's, <coughs> it's potentially a little overdrafted in my opinion, but it's still fine. It's a bulky poison type with Levitate. Ampharos, my mascot, amazing. I love Ampharos and I think it's super underrated. It can be bulky with Cotton Guard. It gets Nasty Plot, I believe. It should get Tail Glow, but that's a, that's a conversation for another day. And Saw's Buck is the sleeper pick. This thing's really good. Um, normal and Grass Stab with Sap Sipper for the boost stuff. You know, for things like Milotic and that make a really good pairing, in my opinion. But, um, you know, that again... Don't let the 12th rank fool you. This is a very strong team and I do expect them to do really well this season. I'm looking forward to seeing how they go. Next up, we have the Retro City Rampados, the team that I absolutely adored last season in Victory League. I think they were great. They were pretty much my top rank from day one and proved me to be correct, which is awesome. An 83 score of B. Um, once again, a really strong team. Let's have a look here. Lander, Asterion, Primarina, Annihilate, Raging Bolt, Mega Metagross. Look at those first five. That is a very strong group. <laughs> um, honestly, if I were drafting a team this season, I would love to have three or four of those myself. Really strong. Um, those five alone can potentially win the league, but you know, we have to look at more factors than just that. We have to look at things like, um, let me see where they were marked down here. Um, honestly, it's it's a pretty good score. The, the priority is their lowest rank. There's obviously not a ton of um, priority here, but you know, it's things that can be addressed. There's a lot of setup potential. Metagross is probably fine enough in the priority department. Um, in terms of hazards and removal, they scored okay. There's, there's a rapid spinner there and things like that. A lot of setters, um, setup potential and offense and defense stats are really strong. I love the low tier stuff as well. Frostmoth is my favorite F tier for sure. Tauros in the hands of Daizuk as we saw last season is just a one hit KO machine. Alolan Executor is a sneaky pick. 
It can do some stuff for sure. I'm not exactly sure what Sinister, 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 whatever it is, uh, the terror thing does. I think it just kind of sits there and might set up and do things like that. Colossal is a great pick as well. Drapion, interesting. I, I prefer Stun Tank, but Drapion's cool too. And I think Meliakti is a really good player, and I think he can definitely make this team work. I'm looking forward to seeing how they do. Okay, next up we have Xavier and the Dallas Victory Stars from the um, ISL League where they are very successful there. And I expect them to be successful here too. Um, Iron Valiant is great. Ogre Pond, the normal one, arguably, I mean, the fire one's obviously the best. It hits really well, but I like the grass one. I think it's a really good B tier value. Gouging fire is great. Slowbro is a snipe that 10 other teams wanted. And I'm, um, you know, it's not my style, but I can appreciate that regenerated teleport skull's really good. Uh, Mega King of Sun is a cool S tier pick. Nido Queen's great. It does everything Nido King does. Slightly bulky and not as strong, but hey, still really good. Foratress is interesting. Um, you kind of know what you're going to get with Foratress. It has that one weakness. It can put hazards up. It can remove them with rapid spin as well. Body press from it is very strong. Um, water killer watch was interesting, but I thought it was going to be ice, but water actually makes a lot of sense because then your only weaknesses are electric and that gets rubbed out by fault absorb and Grass, which you beat with your flying type stab. So, interesting Terra, really cool. I think, while that's an interesting Terra and stuff, I think the Ogre Pond will probably Terra most of the time, as it should. Uh, Cofagregus is great. I, I love Cofagregus. I think Solo Dose is a good defensive typing. Um, Pile of Swine, it just up a lot, is really good. Uh, I believe it was in the championship team last season, so obviously it's got the pedigree to go all the way. And Gerda is a really strong F tier as well. Hits surprisingly strong and is pretty bulky too. Um, a well-earned B, B ranking here. Possibly could be a little higher. The third, Honestly, I don't see a ton of weaknesses with this team. Looking at their uh, score through each thing, you know, a lot of 7s, 8s, and... 9.5 in the uh, disruption and support category, and also setup and wall breaking is really strong too. Uh, I love the low tier stuff. They scored really strongly there and a lot of setup potential. So, you know, the type chart was okay. There's one or two weaknesses that maybe should cause com some concern, but it's not a big deal in my opinion. I think this team will do really well. All right, next up at the nine spot, we have the Lincoln Lavatars, coached by Giraffery. The last season they finished in the top four. So once again, a strong coach who can make any team work. And I'm, I'm excited to see how they go with this one. Um, so with this team, we have the first round pick three overall Alo Mamola. Interesting. I'll leave it there. <laughs> uh, not my favorite pick of the draft, but he really wanted to use it and, you know, credit to him. He, he wanted it and he got it. Uh, Mega Venusaur is one that we don't see a whole lot in the draft league for whatever reason, but it has been picked up a few more times this season and I can definitely see why. It hits surprisingly strong and obviously very bulky and such like that. Uh, Sol Galeo, he may be doing this for the Gabo achievement here. I wanted it down into S minus tier, but it stayed in S plus. Uh, not the best S plus in my opinion, but maybe Giraffe can get it to work. Darkrai, great. Uh, hits really hard, a good wall breaking potential. Rotom Heat. Uh, mainly on this team, I, I would imagine for pivot and removal purposes. Um, there's not a whole lot of removal on this team. That was one of the big uh, factors moving it down the ranks. Uh, I think it's only Rotom and Gligar, maybe? I don't know. I think that's, looking at the scores here, that is its lowest score. The um, hazards and removal score, as well as priorities, pretty low. Um, 
But anyway, we've got Keldia, who I really like. It's a good speed tier, and Water Fighting Stab is really good too. Uh, some issues with coverage moves, but that's a minor complaint. Aromatease, I'm not a huge fan of, just the way it plays. Super bulky Wish Passer, though, it's objectively good in Draft League. I feel like it kind of is a worse Alamola, but you know, we'll see how Draft League makes it work. Gligar Terra Fairy is interesting. I think there's potentially other Terra options that I would have picked had I been the coach of this team, namely one that we'll come up to at the end. But uh, Gligar is cool and can potentially um, be another wall for this team. It's a very bulky team, as you can see. Uh, Hisuian Zerua is a good one. <laughs> I mean, for an F tier, it's fine. It kind of, it's something for owners to think about, you know, if, is that a Sol Galea or is that a um, Hisui and Zoroa? So I hope to see it come to a few games. Trapping she used last season and it's actually quite good. Uh, Arena Trap, base 100 attack. Uh, very slow, but if you can get a Trick Room or something going here or even just run a Focus Sash, it's guaranteed trade. So. That's a pretty neat pick. And Scolipede, a personal favorite of mine. I had this one last season and it was the only reason I didn't get relegated from Premier League. Uh, this is probably who I would have made Terra captain, but uh, he's obviously cooking with Gligar. Uh, I hope to see Scolipede do really well though. This is a strong team. Um, very bulky for sure. Wish passes and such like that. Um, yeah, there's, there's no reason this team can't do well. The coaches clearly experienced and very capable of succeeding so we'll see how this team goes okay next up in the eight slot so these as you can see we've got the red and green lines here that's just where i will update these power rankings with their win loss records and stuff as we go but um the red line is the bottom six typically get relegated and the top six make playoffs so we're in the either the Australian area or the Gavga zone where you don't make playoffs and you don't get relegated. You're just in that happy middle. So in the first slot here, we have the Lumios City Legendaries in the eight position. Um, most of this team I actually quite like. Uh, Great Tusk I think is really good. Um, obviously a premier spinner in the league and also, it hits really strongly as well. It can set up with bulk up and things like that. Rapid Spin, obviously, for the speed boost. Mega Marwile is another one that I think is underdrafted. It's one of my favorite Megas. Hits really strong, has the priority sucker punch. Great typing, can set up. Uh, if, I'm not sure if this team has Trick Room potential, but if it does, that's another thing that he could do. Greninja, circumstantially really good or circumstantially quite useless. Um, I think Jelly can make it work though. Greninja is a objectively good pick in the B tier slot especially. Uh, Tapu Bulu was in the championship team last season. It can terror to the stab for this team because he didn't make it a captain. But uh, obviously hits really well, puts up terrain and things like that. Jirachi is cool. You know, he can do things like the Serene Grace shenanigans and things like that. Tanacrawl is a great hazard setter and removal. Um, and also quite bulky, a bulky water type. So uh, Rotom Fan, the Terra Captain Ice. You know, Electric Flying and Ice is going to hit most things. This is a really good Terra Captain. Definitely um, no critiques there. Alolan Persian, probably one of the best F tiers. Super bulky and it can actually hit quite hard. It gets uh, things like parting shot. Um, <coughs> sorry. Uh, baby Rusty there. Not Baby Rusty, Adolescent Rusty. I think it's a kind of a nothing pick. I, I don't expect this to come a lot. I mean, situationally with Unaware, it can be decent, but it doesn't have a ton of offensive pressure. It's probably just going to be there to status and slack off and do more and stuff like that. Daedrio's relatively fast. I think it's base 110 and decently strong, maybe 90 or 100. Um, you know, Brave Bird, Double Edge and things like that. It may get u turn. I'm not too sure. Uh, Giratina is... I, I'm not a huge fan of Giratina in the S plus tier. I think 
it's a bit too passive for my liking. I know it can be offensive and I think Origin is better than the other one for that reason, but it just doesn't do it for me. I can't really tell you why. <laughs> uh, looking at the scores of this team, Hazards and Removal Elite, uh, Speed Tier is really strong, Momentum Pivoting, no surprise for Jelly is really strong, Disruption and Support really strong, Type Matchup Chart, amazing, um, Cuteness and Hype, meh, and everything else is kind of just that, you know, that 7 to 8 range, so really good as well. Um, strong team by Jelly, I'm not totally surprised, Jelly always seems to draft teams really well, um, but then we'll tear it apart after he wins week one and loses week two as is tradition. So we'll see what Jelly can do here. Okay, next up is the Luscious Lopenies, the most questionable team name and logo, but you know, Mary's moved up here from, I believe winning the uh, Winged King League last season. So, you know, hoping to go back to back here, I guess. Uh, this team's quite good. I like it. Um, I think Scizor and Slow King off the bat is really cool. Um, and, you know, that last that last pick of Kieran Black is... That's kind of arguably one of the best S-plus tiers, in my opinion. Um, this team's really good. It has a really strong priority score, tons of it. Bullet Punch, Scizor, um, Mock Punch, All Vacuum Wave, um, Infernape there. Um, Kangaskhan gets some stuff. It's it's the the priority maybe isn't a ton of different mons, but the ones that get it are definitely going to use it type thing. So the priority scores are really strong there. Uh, pivoting score is also really strong. Wall breaking and setup potential is the highest. <laughs> it's really good. Kieran Black can just come in and delete the world. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the Tangela pick and the. Terra choice is interesting. I would probably go Infernape or Crocodile if it were me, but I'm sure he's cooking with Terra Ghost, um, Bastiodon there. Um, yeah, a lot of momentum and pivoting too. Like, look at the U-turn, Chili Reception, U-turn, U-turn, and then there's a Bolt Switch later on as well. This is a cool team. I'm, I'm expecting them to do pretty well. The speed tiers and hazard removal leave a bit to be desired and the hope the hype score is not amazing. But, you know, aside from that, this is a very well-drafted team and could do really well. Next up, we have Battlestorm, the Season of 5 runner-up. The Pittsburgh Celesteelers with an A- minus rank. Um... If you were to block off the Pittsburgh Cellar Sealers logo and show me this team, I would think this is Jelly's team for sure. Um, but, you know, Jelly consistently draw, uh, ranks really highly in the power rankings at the start of the season, so it makes sense that this team's up there in the top five or six with this particular team. Dragapults can obviously do pretty much everything. Mega Diancy is one of the better Megas in my opinion and uh, really strong there. Necrozma, I'm not convinced by at all, but maybe Storm can make it work. Uh, I think it's super overrated, but Terra Fairy is interesting. I know it can do a lot of setups and gets Photon Geyser and stuff like that, but you know, we'll see what happens there. Swamp it, gross. <laughs> um, but objectively, you know, Flip Turn and Stealth Rocks, pretty bulky, only one weakness. Sizzle, the same thing, only one weakness, a lot of priorities, switching, uh, pivoting and stuff like that. It also gets to Fog, Rotom, Moe, Angelic. This is like those, I want to say Dragapult, Swampert, Scizor, Rotom, Grass in particular, Moltres and Zacian even, or Zamazenta, sorry. Very jelly picks, but you know, again, they're good. Uh, Rotom, Moe, Defog and switching around. Moltres, you know, bulky fire type with flame body. It's it's pretty good like that. Uh, Zamazenta, it's the one that can hold an item as well, which I think is the better one. A really good S tier pick. Bufalant, I'm not sure if that was in honor of Kira. I thought we'd get him back with Mars Shadow coming back, but not to be. Uh, it's a cool, it's a definitely a cool um, F tier pick. Scum Tank, I alluded to earlier, I think is actually really good in this league. And Cryogonal gets all the 
hazard removal and is very, very bulky on the special side. It can also uh, freeze dries great and I think it can do veil and things like that, although it would have to do manual snow. Very worthy, we're very worthy of the A minus tier and I want to say from this point up, including this team here, these are my teams that I would pick to potentially win the league. So Storm is definitely, we've seen that he's more than capable of making finals. It's just a matter of going one step further for him and this may be the season he does it. All right. In the fifth spot, we have Nuno Gomes and the Menacing Krakens. They have the first pick overall. And they took Mars Shadow, which, to the surprise of nobody, makes their team pretty strong. <laughs> Nuno has drafted a very, very strong team here. Um, Mars Shadow, obviously the headline here. Uh, the slam dunk pick one overall, in my opinion. It's really strong. We'll have to see how teams deal with it. It'll definitely warrant a lot of prep from opponents. But in saying that, Nuno is the kind of person, and this is what I love about the way he plays. He may not even bring it most weeks. Like, I, he would definitely bring it half the weeks, definitely, but he's just as likely to leave it at home and hope you're over prep for it and instead beat you with a Del Fox or a Flygon. So, the supporting the Marshadow Act, we have Zoroaka Sui, the best counter to Marshadow, is in Nuno's hands. So that's one he doesn't have to deal with and can also threaten it because they only share... Wait, they they actually don't share any weaknesses, which is amazing. Um, Ferrothorn at, at the third round is interesting. Uh, I don't really think it was worth that, but it did move down a tier, so maybe he's got plans that we'll have to wait and see what he's cooking up there. Flygon, obviously I love the way better Garchomp. Does a lot more as well can Dragon Dance, U-Turn, Defog, and things like that. Uh, Tapu Fini is really strong as well, a great pick. Uh, the typing of Water and Fairy is really cool. Uh, Delphox with the Terra Grass, I think ultimately was the correct Terra choice for Nuno. He was, I know he was tossing up between that and a couple of other things, but I really like Delphox with Terra Grass. I think it covers things really well for it. Uh, Galeria Moltres is great, obviously, a lot of sweeping potential and stuff like that. Then, I feel like the team gets a little weaker after that. I'm not, I don't, I'm less sure about Alolan Sand slash, uh, Alolan Golem, Mega Beedrill and Drampa, but hey, he can get things to work here. I know all these four will definitely come to games, so if you're prepping to battle Nuno, you better prep for all 11 because any of them are just as likely as the others. Uh, this is a strong team, definitely a contender, and I really hope Nuno does well here. In the fourth slot, we have Potato and the Boston Blades, an amazing logo as well, with an A- minus ranking. Uh, aside from the first pick, this is a great draft. Um, Magana, some people think it's the best, some people think it's overrated, I'm in the latter camp, but aside from that, he really turned it on. Uh, Magana coupled with Latias is um, an amazing core, I'm not going to deny that. They kind of both cover each other's weaknesses really well, I think only Ghost hits both for neutral or super effective. Uh, Emma, the Zapdos, an amazing pick. Sneasler is cool if you can get it going. He has got terrain later in the draft as well. So, you know, that could be a plan he runs with. Uh, Mamoswine, I think is one of the best C tiers. I'm surprised he didn't go that as the Terra Captain with Terra Grass, but you know, Lilligan Ground might have something planned. Who knows? The Dunsparce, I'm not entirely sure what it does. I think it's kind of a Jack of all trades, master of none. It can kind of be bulky and just sit in your face and glare everything and set up coils, or it can just be super offensive with boom bursts and things like that. Uh, Hisuian Samurai. Ceaseless Edge is one of the most spammable moves in the game, getting up spikes and stuff like that. Um, Lola Marowak is really strong too. Um, there is Trick Room potential in this team, and he could make the most of that with a Lola Marowak with Bone Club or whatever it's done. 
what the hold the hold item that doubles its attack. I'm not sure what it's called. Thick club, maybe. Really strong as well. Lilligan. Its move pool is amusing, comically bad, but with the terror obviously covers the steel types and fire types pretty effectively. Archaeops is one of the most underrated E tiers on the board. I think it's really good. And Grookey's obviously just there for the terrain factor. This is a strong team. It's really high. Um, it has a really good uh, synergy and low tier ranking because, like I said, I think Archaeops, Marowak, and uh, Lilligant can definitely get the job done here. This is a t another team where I expect all 11 of these to make appearances throughout the season. This is a tough one to prepare for, and aside from Medina, is incredibly high. Very good draft potato. I hope you do well this season. Next up, we have the reigning champion, the Cambridge Camera Ups, with an A tier rank. Uh, look at that logo, it's so small. <laughs> uh, Alex had the middle of the road pick this season. I think he was picked seven or eight or something like that. But he's drafted a really good team here. Uh, Ogreplon Wellspring is a really cool uh, first round pick. Iron Treads is probably one of the best rapid spinners in the game, in my opinion. Uh, and if that wasn't enough, he's also got uh, Terrapagos, um, the turtle form, not the big turtle, just the regular turtle form, and another rapid spinner that can set up and do um, the Star Storm move, which is really cool. Togekiss moved down a tier, can now Terra, another great pick. Mega Houndoom also moved down a tier, it's a really good pick as well. Uh, Hariyama with the Steel type is a really cool. I. When he sent through this Terra pick, I wasn't too sure about it, but then I thought about it more. It actually does flip the type chart, so all the things that are effective against Hariyama are now not very effective, which is cool. And obviously, Stab Bullet Punch is another reason. Crobat, the S+, plus maybe, or F tier, maybe, but definitely not C tier. It, landed, it found itself in D tier, and Alex thought that's, that's value enough. I'm going to go for it, and he did, which is pretty cool. Super fast, can pivot, can hit like a truck, can terror. I'm interested to see what Crobat does this season. Regular Rotom, it's it's probably a little weaker than it would want to be, but um, you know, Electric and Ghost is a pretty cool typing, and it can also defog and things like that. Bolt switch. Liopard has become the hot property F tier this season. I believe it was drafted in every league with a few things that went up to E tier, and I can see why. Prankster uh, can do pretty much anything for you. And, you know, it's not super bulky, but it's got a decent attack and special attack stat, I think. Uh, Bahium, I think it's called. Bahium? I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> um, interesting to see what this thing does. I've literally never seen this draft, and I've been doing draft leagues for a long, long time now. Uh, I'm really excited to see what it can do. And Kieran White's obviously... You can look at this draft and think Marsh Shadow and Ho are one and two, which is valid. Uh, in my opinion, I think Kieran White and Kieran Black probably rival Ho for that second spot. Uh, a really strong team, good wall breaking potential as well with that particular pick. Um, looking at uh, Alex's breakdown of scores here. Um, yeah, he scored, honestly, like 8.5s and 9s across the board. The tight matchup chart may have some issues and stuff like that, but. This is a pretty strong overall team. It, it definitely earns its spot in the top three, in my opinion. In the second place, we have Ubezin and the Cute Hands. This was Boss Baby's uh, most cutest team in the draft. And honestly, I think it's pretty hype too. He has the mascot pick. He had, the synergy on this team is like the best in the draft, in my opinion. He has the psychic terrain to um, help out the Armor Rouge and also the Holucha with Unburden, uh, things like that. Also can stop the uh, priority against things like Naganadel and Miasterata, as well as Lycanroc, but it also does stop Lycanroc's Accelerock unless he's hitting a flying type, which could come into play a little bit. I just hope he doesn't forget about that and can play around it, which I'm sure he can. Um, the low tier strength of this is really good in my opinion. 
Uh, if the terrain wasn't enough, he's also got that sandaconda there to throw up the sand for the houndstone to potentially sweep as well. And that's kind of, it's like that hybrid sand thing that Alex had last season. And it's clearly a recipe for success because he won the league. Um, but yeah, Tapu Lele, Naganadel, really strong one-two punch. Miascarada's uh, really fast, as well as Horlucha. Um, and Polion's that bulky Defogger. Lycanroc is, has Accelerock, which is one of the best priority moves in the game and a personal soft spot for mine. Houndstone, another dog, how can you late it? Last Respects is not banned in this league, so spam away. Uh, Sandaconda, I touched on earlier. I believe it's probably mostly there for the sand, but it can also do things like glare, coil, and put up rocks as well. It's a handy easier pick. Uh, Galvantula, I think Ubezin is the only one that drafted webs, so... You know, that's arguably the best hazard uh, that you can put up, and it really helps this team in its speed already. Um, Armor Rouge with the Terra Dark is interesting. I probably personally would have gone Empoleon or Lycanroc more likely for my Terra Captain, but Dark's cool. We'll see what it can do. And Wiggly, Storm's favorite, the S tier for the price of an F. So, pretty cool team. Looking at it now, the uh, low tier, low tier and synergy is amazing. Speed tiers are great. Priority is good. Pivot momentum is good. Uh, cuteness ranking was the highest in the league, and the hype factor was also pretty high. Uh, the wall breaking and setup potential is really high too, um, mostly by Naganadel and the Houndstone, and also um, Rouge in Psychic Terrain is a monster. But that brings us to our top rank, the Bolton Boisels, coached by Mosef slash Hood. Um, this team's great as well, <laughs> um, to no surprise because they're ranked first. It is very close though, but this is, in my opinion, the best looking team. We've got the uh, Ogre Pond Half Flame, really good, really good pick there. Hits like a truck, Zacian Light. Um, Tapu Koko with the Electric Terrain. We've got two past Paradox Mons there in Roaring Moon and Slitherwing. And you can also see the sun coming up with Torkoal, Gerald. So, you know, there's things there that can make the most of the, uh, the sun for sure. Less so Electric Terrain, but, you know, we'll, we'll see what he's cooking there. Cellar Seal is pretty gross, but in saying that, it can also be really offensive with like Autonomize and Media Beam and stuff like that. Um, the Heligo is great. I drafted it before and thought it was really good. Um, I, I think he can definitely make the most of that. Uh, Mega Burnett with Prankstar is one of my best value pick Megas, and it actually hits really strong as well. People seem to forget about that. Meloetta is amazing. I'm a huge fan of Meloetta and Terra Fighting is perfect for it. It's a shame you can't Terra Fighting without making it your wild card while it's in the pirouette form. Togetic and Primplup, uh, it kind of falls off a little bit, but I don't hate it. The low tier, the low tier strength score is definitely inflated by your things like your Burnett and um, Meloetta. But Primplup and Toga Togetic are also really bulky as well and can do things like hazards and stuff. So not the worst at all. Um, overall, I think this league is super strong. Um, I, I know that the ranking for the 49 Tails is potentially harsh, but that's kind of just my opinion on their team. I, I do hope Gene can maybe make some trades to, to make it a bit more enjoyable for the viewers, but Hey, if he can make it work, then all the power to him. Um, if I were to pick my favorite three teams to kind of potentially win the league, I really like the top two teams and I really like Nuno and Storm's teams. Um, obviously, I think Alex and Potato have really good teams too, but if I were to pick the three or four, I would probably lean to those. Um, but, you know, I'm really looking forward to seeing what creative sets people come up with. And uh, thank you for tuning into the Premier League Power Rankings. If you agree or disagree or have any thoughts that I didn't consider, please let me know in the comments below. And um, 
yeah, make sure to check out all the Draft League content coming up and like and subscribe. So yeah, thank you.